hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel today let's discuss a very very important topic that is overcoming your delegation limit in power apps so we all have faced this issue every now and then in power apps right every time when we try to fetch more than 2000 records in our canvas applications always it was a limitation or challenge for us like we used to come up with some workarounds like page generator galleries or using Power Automate to fetch more records and getting the response back and show in the collection, right? So instead of doing that, there's a quick workaround which we have come up with, okay? So today let's discuss how better we can tackle this limitation and can fetch easily more than 10,000 records, like, you know, no matter how many records it are, it, it's there, present right there. We'll be able to fetch all, all the items present in the data source and show. But having said that, Based on the data size, it will take quite a quite little amount of time to show all the details. Okay, so let's see how we can overcome this challenge. As you can see my screen, this is my Power Platform Studio. Okay, so here in the data was tables, I have added three tables. Okay, as the name itself says 10,000 rows, then comes 50,000 rows, then come 5,000 rows. Okay, so based on the row limit, I have arranged these three tables of mine. Okay, let's see one by one how we can fetch all this number of items in our Canvas application. Okay, so I'm navigating navigating to one of my Canvas app which I have just now created. Okay, so by the name Delegation Breakthrough. Okay, so as you can see the data sources I have connected to all three of my data sources. Okay, and if you can see on the screen I have added three buttons. Okay and uh, with labels okay and the labels are just counting the collection okay one is main call next comes is main call one then comes milk main call three okay and let me just show you the de demo how it's working okay let me reset it to back to zero okay so counters are, are all zero now and i'm hitting on this button first to get 5000 records from my 5000 rows table so as you can see it's counted and it's it has fetched all the 5000 records of mine that is four triple nine okay now again i'm cl clicking on this button to get 10000 rows so if you see it has fetched 10000 rows for me similarly for 50000 rows it will start fetching since it's the size is more it is taking some time to accumulate all of those content okay so as you see it has fetched approximately 50000 records whatever i have in my data source table right so based on the data size limit it will take the time accordingly okay so let's go through the code how it's able to fetch all of the records okay in a shorter span of time right so i'm going to one of my code let's go to the 50000 items okay and and i'm expanding this so this is the code a simple code which you can use and i'll provide this code in my description as well so that you can reuse it for your own uh, collections and the data sources to overcome the challenge okay it's just a quick small uh, data snippet first of all what i'm doing here is i'm clearing the main collection okay and whatever the collection in, in which i'm collecting my all the records from the data source okay that i'll just say clear then i'm adding this specific formula of mine okay which is nothing but for all it's nothing but a loop i'm running a loop okay and i'm using a function called sequence okay to run my code sequential manner right if you see what sequence is doing first first of all we go inside the formula okay i'm sorting my data sourced to descending order okay and i'm saying collecting uh dividing it by 500 that means I'm dividing my entire data source in 500 chunks of data. Okay. And you can give a higher number also here, but it will, uh, you know, according to the higher number, it will uh, 
fetch more items at a time we can give 2000 as well because our higher limit is 2000 okay so i have just kept for now 500 chunks of data okay so roundup i am doing why because i am getting the the top count of that item okay i want to get the count of that specific item right the top count always so sequence in a loop whatever what it does it will keep on fetching my top records one by one okay if you see sequence it says one comma one right in sequence uh, first of all i am rounding up to zero first okay to get the the least uh, a record uh, the least item of mine after dividing by 500 okay and i am saying one comma one that means always it will run sequentially and it keeps on taking my the least record like you know least item count number one by one okay so in this entire formula of mine index id is the one that plays the most important role okay mm -hmm. just now i was telling you about one comma one right that is nothing but it will keep on getting index id column the least index id column value sequentially okay so what index id column here is index id column you have to create a custom column that should be a number field always and it should be incremental okay so i'll go to one of my tables to show you this okay let me open this 10,000 rows table so in this table if you can just see the columns here okay and i'll just scroll to the right so this is my index id if you see so currently as you know the dataverse will show only few set of records uh, at the time of load right so, and we can see more to see a lot of the rows later so if i am just scrolling to the right again and coming to my index id if you see here this is my incremental value column which i created custom column okay so you can ask me a quick question that it can it work for the sharepoint uh, default incremental id column right we have a id column in sharepoint but uh, the answer to that is no you have to have an index id column separately and it should be a number field okay and uh, you can come up with another question saying that so right now you have the entire data set and now you want to fetch more than 2000 records right or 5000 records whatever and you don't have a column incremental column what you can do right so what you can do is you can create an index id column that should be a number field okay to you know to to, to keep it on track and you know and uh, update all incremental values create a simple flow like this if you see my screen i have created a simple flow it says incremental numbers okay after creating a just a column okay and i have initialized a variable that is says counter and integer initialize it to one okay and with the help of this i am getting all the rows from my dataverse and similarly you can also get from sharepoint sql or whatever it is you can list get all the rows right with the help of the action of that and then i am running a loop over here in apply to each so i am looping all the records one by one if you see here right and what i'm just doing i'm just saying update my row okay and here is my uh, index id column so in this index id column what i'll do i'll just add my variable which i just initialized above right the counter and at the end that means inside the loop itself i'll increment the same variable right i'll increment it by one like this so what will happen every time it runs it will come here initialize the counter and in this loop first the value will be one and then it will increment by one so this will help to uh, for us to add all the incremental values in our existing data source so that we will be able to fetch more than 5000 or 50000 records right whatever our data data source have okay so it, that is about that and uh, if again i'm coming to my data source this is my incremental column okay and uh, coming back to the formula okay that is about index id which is very important which plays the key role in our logic okay next comes width function so what this width function does everything is dependent on this width after this because sequence always keeps on getting the numbers right which is coming the least over there so what what width does is width will store that first id 
so whatever if you see this record dot value is nothing but whatever the sequence is returning us right that value minus one into 500 it is doing and here is just multiplying by 500 so what it will do when we are multiplying it will give us the first id and the last id of that specific sequence correct always when we do this so it's giving us always the first id and the last id of that specific 500 records of sequence okay and every time what we are doing we are collecting those so what we are seeing while collecting index id that is our custom number column we are saying greater than first id and index id less than uh, less than equal to last id right that means every time what it is doing it will go sequentially and keeps on uh, collecting the data in form of chunks of 500 correct so if you see this logic is very similar to pagination which we implemented right every time we are using first and last and we keep on collecting the number of items whenever we click on next icon right similarly this sequence is performing that first and and last and logic for us right so to so if i tell you overall this specific functionality is achievable uh, the main points uh, the main functions to uh, you know execute this is sequence which is running and getting the count sequentially every time and then comes our looping technique that is with first study and last study in the uh, fifth function right with the help of this first study and last study we are able to fetch all the records in 500 chunks at a time right so the delegation will uh, you know we can over, we will be able to overcome delegation how means with the help of this chunks itself so every time we are not fetching all the items at a time we are fetching in form of small small chunks and then we are storing back to the collection whatever the name we are giving it and it will collect it for us right so similar logic is added everywhere in all the buttons if you see only my collection name is different here, different here but the logic is totally same you see the 5000 also the logic is totally same okay so guys uh you can this is very useful uh useful hack so you can use this in your projects and overcome this delegation issue and for the best practice instead of on click of a button use this at on visible of the screens or if you have the if if you don't you know every time want the fresh data every time and anytime you can add it on app on start that is the actual that this app on start adding this formula at our app on start is the uh, very basic key role which plays okay but having said that if you don't want the fresh data on visible of the screen okay if you have such requirement that you always want a fresh data always add it on the visible of the screen okay so on these two specific uh, controls you'll be able to perform this logic and you'll be able to get all the items from the data sources okay i just want to show the demo at last time if you see i'm resetting all the collections and i'm getting 5000 records so you see every time in 500 chunks it's collecting my all the data right so that's how our logic works well uh, i hope you guys will make use of it a lot okay so guys please go through my description for for using this specific uh, formula snippet and uh, make it of use well thank you so much for watching guys i hope you liked and enjoyed the video